<sighs> Next question. Yay! Thoughts on sex magic. M-A-G-I-C-K. I am because I still don't get it. So while Mariam knows a lot about Marxist Leninism and the um, you know dissolution of the Soviet Union, I happen to know a fair bit about <laughs> sex magic. Each according so to their need, each according to <laughs> No, I actually, what I do know a lot about is um, neo-paganism and the reason why lots of people are turning to it. So it's not clear what you mean by sex magic. I mean, I'm assuming you don't mean the Justin Timberlake song, love and sex magic, ooh, because that's what first came to my mind. If you're talking oh, about... we should do the Dua Lipa thing after the show. I, I, psh, we'll I'm drunk. Exactly why. <laughs> Anyways. Never get it over. That's me trying to sing Julie Leaper. Oh, sorry. Um, so basically, I don't know exactly what your question is, but I do know a lot about the fact that um, a lot of particularly uh, queer people and women are turning towards paganism and witchcraft in recent years as a kind of response to um, neoliberalism. And, oh, is this like, the whole witch, witch, the witch thing? Oh, Twitter is all about witches these days. Well, I don't know because I'm not on Twitter that much, but I am in a lot of Facebook groups. <laughs> I can we each have our own frontiers, it's very good. But um, essentially, it's a response to like alienation and like the dissolution of spirituality under neoliberalism and a way of kind of trying to reclaim and involve yourself in a sense of community and a sense of like collective identity, which I think is very, very cool. I'm way too, I take myself way too seriously, or I don't take myself seriously enough to be able to like authentically and sincerely engage in witchcraft. But I do know that it's been used by a lot of people as a way of like, understanding their bodies, understanding themselves as women, and this kind of thing, which is really cool. It also ties into like the fact that loads of queers, it's kind of a queer parody, are involved in um, like astrology, and like get a lot of, I guess, um, they get like soothed and comforted by uh, star signs and star charts and stuff. And like Team Vogue has recently started doing a star chart thing. As far as sex magic goes, the way I understand it is a way of kind of like, okay, as a purely pragmatist and not someone who is a, a patron of the finer arts, is a way of basically appreciating your orgasm and understanding it in a kind of a deeper level than just like, you flick this part of your body a thousand times and then like something happens that is mechanic, right? It's a way of like... It's so interesting, because I find that magical though. Well, me too, like I'm not... Ow. Oh, I'm not one painful. of these... Yeah, it's fine, I'm gonna keep talking. <laughs> I, I'm not... A witch. Interesting, as a teenager, I dabbled in paganism. My boyfriend's mom wanted to know my time of birth because she was an actual pagan. She had like a shrine in front of her um, uh, oven, oven, no stove, and everything, and was like very into it. And like, in, I come from a very, very small, very, very pagan town. Like, we ce celebrate the solstice wearing like, um, like skull masks and carrying pitchforks every winter and like flaming torches and it's like a very very spiritual and pagan town i really love ceremony because i think atheists in particular and particularly i guess neoliberal atheists we do not get enough of ceremony and ritual in our lives and exactly. i think it's something that's really lacking yeah yeah i mean we talk about this all the time right as anarchists where like we don't celebrate uh, each other's well not only each other's achievements but we don't have communal experiences mm -hmm. that leads to alienation everything's super individualistic so i understand why people i guess turn to these communities is it not sort of like pseudo-religious then basically it's religious only in the sense of like paganism being religious like as a spiritual connection to like mother nature right or like recognizing the earth as the thing that we should be worshiping and appreciating rather than some kind of concept of god uh, is it, i mean i i wouldn't necessarily i mean look what oh, yeah, Greek the religions and and or yeah, the line between religion and spirituality is like yeah, not a line. Yeah, 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 I guess yeah. what I mean, it, what I we mean, still when have I say, all the different gods and shit. When I say religion, I guess I mean established kind of institutional religion, gotcha. and it's a way of like getting away from the institutions of religion, which are oppressive, towards a kind of personal relationship with the religion, something that can be communal without being institutionalized. It's so interesting because we talk about this a lot sometimes privately, where we say that. You see a lot of, especially I found this in England, like people coming from like Christian schools or just generally sort of like Church of England backgrounds, then they fall into anarchism very, very quickly as like this, this new way of rebel rebelling and escaping their oppressed childhoods and stuff. They do, you know, they get arrested a couple of times and they fuck off, you know, pretty much. Uh, but um, yeah, and it's because they see it as this it's this rejection of, of, of what they grew up with, but then we fall into the same patterns. So a lot of the, oh, I don't know, a lot of what you see in terms of 
group dynamics and or different oh my god different spheres of of oh how to explain this like even sometimes the way that we defend each other kind of fall we fall into these tribes right so tribal politics mm. i suppose right yes definitely. and they and they reproduce a lot of the kind of religious uh structures well, it shows our need for a collective agreement you yeah. know like m me thinking what i say is right is not good enough i need a other people to also think what yeah, i'm saying yeah, is yeah. right for all of our atheism still like we find yeah. it so difficult to be individualistic on a really deep level but that's why i mean humans are not we're not individual animals we are tribal animals like but i think we should be open about this rather than using i'm sorry but using these sort of like tropes or, or theater to to dismiss well not dismiss but kind of like separate our class alienation a lot of the time and the fact that our you know we're separated from our own modes of production and we kind of come up with these different aesthetics and or groups that really only soothe our existences but doesn't offer but they don't offer any actual material escape i don't know just i guess these are my thoughts on sex magic is that i i i, I worry that it is it is another way for us to just really kind of mask our fundamental the alienation I mean, such, but like material alienation I don't feel like that but I mean only speaking kind of anecdotally but like the people I know who practice witchcraft in like a contemporary way I'm are not. also people that are involved in like um, feminist anti-capitalist groups and it's mostly queer people I know and, and feminist people I know who are engaging in witchcraft as a it's as an, like I don't I don't like the um, idea of like there's only you don't do one thing at one time right there also are the people going to demos there also are the people organizing like and I think it just, it, it, I think they speak to different levels of need. I think you can have a material need. I think you can also, I can't believe I'm saying this, my mom would kill me, but I think you can also have a spiritual need of, com of communion. Yes, and I we get that know. from dinner parties in the same way that other people get that from maybe like ritual ceremonies. I still think that, I don't know, I think capital is so pervasive in all of our interactions and definitely has really gone into like the DNA of our especially in the past couple of generations as such, it's the way that we relate to each other and the competitions that it creates. And again, the sort of alienation that it creates is that, and I mean, you know, the, 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 and, and so we come up with these little, whether that's, to be fair, that's all forms of art can be a lot of the time. I mean, Adorno was writing about jazz or whatnot, how that is just the way of us, and, and, or sports, and I talk about this as well as video games as well. These are just like temporary, temporary experiences that we create for ourselves to, to really to just kind of escape momentarily from our really fundamental kind of loss as to where we are as a species as such. And I think we just add different aesthetics on, on top of it all. Um, but, but really, it's just like the, the, the kind of basic, basic loss as to, as to what counts as being a human being and what, what, what Again, we talked about this in our previous questions as a, what counts as a, as a quality or whatnot in one's own worth and one's own self. And we were creating these myths, for, to be fair, for millennia. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't disagree with you, but I also don't think that it's a bad thing that people are trying to find a sense of like communion and like solidarity wherever they can. Like, yes, we can, sure, we can say, like, course. yes, they should be just like trying to start like a class uprising but i think it's like you say like with video games like with dinner parties like with new years and bonfire nights and all these moments well, of coming together like well, they, they are all aesthetic. they are all an example of like trying to find something that's shared and something that is bigger than the material conditions i think dinner parties are different because way. they don't necessarily have an aesthetic stuck onto them i'm saying whenever there's like a myth stuck onto it like social interactions i find and i mean it's very very difficult to find them in a pure form per se you know but i mean it, it's it, it's so tr tricky to find, to really get to the, to the roots of what the social interaction has to be as such. And we, so create, we all create these separate different communities and fandoms as such. Um, and I mean, to be fair, I, I cannot come up with an alternative because it all will already be um, sort of tinted by my aesthetical understanding as well, yeah. you know? I mean, that's the problem, right? Like we are too imbued, like there is, like, the question is, I suppose, do we try to make things better whilst acknowledging that we are living in a contradiction under capitalism, or do we say, no, I shall be an... I can't, I can't say this word, I have a lisp. Aesthetic. Uh, uh, mm, shall I just be this, like, 
person that doesn't engage in anything who wears a Hessian sack until the revolution comes, right? I mean, this is why Gideport killed himself in the end, right? Right, <laughs> like, but, then, but this is the question. Well, yes, no, of Like, course. everything is a form of spectacle, if yeah, you like. Yeah, 100%, this is it. Like, I, yeah, it took me years to even put my name on anything because that already... Even putting your name on any, yeah, that creates social capital, that yeah. creates, you know, that destroys horizontality. And so many anarchos that were, well, I'm fucking well, they wouldn't allow me to because, again, mm -hmm. then I'm destroying the social, well, not yeah. the norm, as, not, not the norm, but like, I guess, the striving towards that horizontal society. Right, you such. get blamed for being an individualist even if you are trying to make something better just yeah, because you yeah, dared yeah, to yeah. put your name to work you did. Yeah, but... I mean, I, I encountered this just a few weeks ago, right? I, yeah, and I fully see that contradiction and I fight it every single fucking day every, yeah. with every tweet, with every follower again, with now every dollar I get. Like, it kills me on the inside. That like I have to be the voice or whatnot, and or, you know that for sure you know for the for the better and stuff. And but what does it do? Like I, it just reproduces the same fucking you know market forces. You know I am absolutely. But we're all complicit. And, all. and again, as we're saying, you know we're just fighting in the crumbs. We're fighting in the crumbs. Yeah. Whereas Jeff Bezos, you know, could fucking whatever was the you know the statistics about him. Mm. Wow, you know he could buy a couple of countries and still be a billionaire. It's fucking well. And I, you know, fucking you as well, you know, you from, we, we feel terrible for buying a bottle of wine. It's fucking dark, you know. So, yeah, it's funny because the question was about sex magic and we went so, into okay. this. I guess we're, go we're going back to the sex magic thing. Like, if finding some kind of, like, spirituality in your orgasm and in sex is something that makes you feel, like, more connected and less anything less alone, then that's totally fine. But also, come for the demo. Yeah, that, exactly. And so I wonder, what if those feelings someone gets out of practices that are, you know, less fluffy, a bit less, I don't know, wrapped in fairly safe aesthetic? You know, that sort of sense of a community. What, what? Well, I guess then they're oppressive, that's it. And you're if you're a fascist, you're a fascist, to be fair, that's all. Yeah, but you might have good stuff. <laughs> No, no. One time, I did it one time. I poked the, I poked the anime uh, beehive one time. What's the anime beehive? Well, it's not even beehive because bees are actually wicked. This was a um, what I did bad wasp nest. Wasp nest. Yeah, and I will never do it again. I will never do it again. How else is it going to I think I just did it. No, no, no. As in, like, oh, just poke bad aesthetics as such. <laughs> oh, I think I saw that. Yeah. Never again. <laughs> I guess I did that. But anyways, no, no, no. It's it's good. But honestly, Look, I'm a I think, snob too, it's fine. But honestly, I think like practicing witchcraft and finding like a spirituality in various things as long as they're not harming other people is totally legit and fine. And like, we are all trying to find the things that make sense for us in this world as long as we're not doing it instead of engaging in like, you know, like class politics and feminist politics and like anti racism politics and anti fascist politics. Why the fuck not? Sure.